Hello everyone, welcome to this new episode. I am Swapnil Karkare here to talk about economics. Currently, three things bother me. First is unemployment, second household savings, third is inflation. Initially, I wanted to talk about a lot of economic indicators. How are we doing with exports and imports? How are we doing with industrial production? What is inflation rate? What is exchange rate? How the stock market is moving? What are the corporate results showing? So on and so forth. A lot of things happened in between. I didn't get time to finish the video. And in between, the most important thing happened and that is budget. So I thought that, okay, this is a perfect time to talk about unemployment. So the government announced three grand policies on employment, which are called employment linked incentive scheme. So in this episode, we are going to only deal with those three employment incentive schemes. And uh, let us check out what are they and will the situation really change? Did you see this video of hordes of men around Air India building in Mumbai? More than 25,000 people turned up for just 2,216 vacancies. There are various numbers floating around like 15,000, 50,000, whatever. But the number is huge. And uh, what was the job like? The job was for handymen, which is like loading and unloading the baggage at the airport and like working in the warehouse or and handling some kind of airport tractors and so on and so forth. That was the job. What was the minimum qualification? Minimum qualification was SSC pass. That's the only criteria. And what was the salary? It was hardly 22,000 rupees per month. And who all turned up? Unfortunately, a lot of graduates turned up. We are seeing such kind of incidents all over India. And sometimes these kinds of trends are not new that, you know, a very highly qualified person is applying for a very basic job. Such kind of jobs are actually called as underemployment, where you are employed, but not, uh, you know, using your full skills or you should be employed somewhere else, actually, because of your qualifications. That is the situation where it is called underemployment. So India has both the problems. Unemployment is also there and underemployment is also there. Now, let us jump to unemployment. What's the unemployment rate in India? That is the bigger question. Government has some number and CMI, it is a private body, very trusted and very credible. Uh, it has another number. Usually their numbers don't sync with each other. Uh, however, at the start of 2024, both the numbers kind of suggested that the unemployment rate in India is between 7 and 8%. The government data, which is also known as PLFS, Periodic Labor Force Survey, it showed that between January and March 2024, uh, first quarter of 2024, the unemployment rate was 6.7%. The monthly average of the CMI data for these months come to 7.5%. CMI's latest data shows that in the month of June, the unemployment rate was 9.2%. Uh, finally, we are seeing that the government has woken up to this reality because earlier, if you uh, listen to any kind of interviews, any kind of uh, topic regarding unemployment and employment, the government, the bureaucracy or the ministers, they used to say that, oh no, we are generating so much employment. We are use, we are implementing so many schemes that will generate employment. How are you saying that employment is not generated? That was the kind of argument. At least this is solved. Acceptance is the key, right? So before talking about the exact employment or unemployment situation or the schemes, the one thing that government needs to address is the data. Currently, the government data is sort of, you know, secondary. Most economists use CMI data for all kinds of analysis. The RBI has used PLFS, which is the government data, for current some kind of data release they did. And it shows that India has generated so much of employment. Unfortunately, that doesn't tally with the reality. And there was a lot of uproar, uh, you know, in the media, in the print and everywhere. Like, how can you be writing such kind of reports or releasing such kind of data where 
the reality is a sync with this data and yet the rbi about 2 3 weeks ago said there is no jobs crisis in india <laughs> exact words no jobs crisis in india why didn't anyone from the minister or any officer stand up and say we reject this statement so either the government or the rbi should release what assumptions they are using what kind of data they have actually collected and how are they tallying with the current reality so hopefully if the government is more responsive it will you know try to fix the data or fix uh, certain things in it but the data is something which is very much important and why we will come to that later and in case if you are more curious about data uh, regarding unemployment there are two videos which i would recommend one is the youtube channel called bond economist there is a very good video about unemployment uh, data and second is the print channel which has a show called macro sutra so those two have a really good episodes on employment data so do check that out if you are more curious about like what's the data and how the data is calculating now let us come to the main thing and uh, how the government has decided to solve the problem of unemployment in india is by introducing employment linked incentive scheme it is divided into three parts scheme a scheme b and scheme c scheme a is for the first time employees okay you are just fresh out of the educational institution and you are in some kind of corporate world that is the scheme for you scheme b is for job creation in manufacturing sector there is a kind of incentive for both employers as well as employees in the first scheme it was the incentive for employees this is for both and there is scheme c which is a incentive for employers okay so scheme a is for employees scheme b is for both and scheme c is for employers now let us go one by one so let us start with scheme a it is for all first time employees who become members under epfo which is the provident fund if those people are earning less than 1 lakh per month which is a very high bracket okay so most of the employees who will be joining will get covered and those people will get one month's salary as a subsidy maximum limit is 15000 rupees and that will be paid in three installments so if you are earning 1 lakh rupees a month or 90000 rupees a month the government will pay you 15000 rupees and that will be paid in three equal installments in corporate parlance you can say that the government is paying you the joining bonus so to say okay so that is what the government is trying to do is to basically give more subsidy or give more incentive to the employees the reason could be that the amount will be spent by the employees and that's how the consumption can also be increased but since government is giving money it is not easy right there are some conditions one condition is that you have to take a test yes it is called financial literacy course and you have to complete it before you get the second installment i don't know what happens if you fail are there any re uh, examinations or something like that second condition is that you cannot leave before 12 months if you leave then the employer your boss has to return that money to the government whatever you have got so far so that is something which is really interesting uh again here there is no clarification uh, right now that uh, will that kind of refund be a cost to employer or that gets adjusted to the full and final settlement to the employee now let us move on to the next scheme which is scheme b this is for the first time employees in the manufacturing sector and is applicable for both corporate and non corporate entities but who are eligible there is some condition 50 employees or 25% of the baseline which is the previous year's number of epf employees whichever is lower some restrictions are similar like the scheme a but the benefit is quite different here both employer and employee uh, get benefits year wise benefits are also different first two years 12% each then 8% each and then 4% uh, 
each of the salary. And this incentive shall be in addition to the scheme A. So whatever you are getting in scheme A, those employees, uh, the 15,000 rupees one, you will get that. Plus in addition, you will get those 12%, 8% and all those things. So for four years, you will get some kind of benefits from the government in scheme B, if you are employer as well as employee. Now let us jump to scheme C. This is just for employers and it applies to all sectors. Earlier it was only manufacturing sector. Scheme A was also, I think they have not specified which kind of sector, but scheme C is for all sectors. Okay. All additional employment will be calculated and the government will reimburse 3000 rupees per month for two years towards the EPFO contributions for each additional employee. Again, here there are some eligibility criteria. If there are less than 50 employees last year, then at least two new employees will be uh, must be added uh, in the cohort. And if the earlier employment strength is 50, then at least five should be added. What we can see is that scheme A is for employees first time under EPFO some money will be given as subsidy to the employees. Scheme B is for both employer and employee in manufacturing sector. And there are year-wise incentives for both employer and employee for every new addition to the employment. And there is a scheme C, which is only for employer. All sectors, some money will be given as subsidy to employer. So the first thoughts of this kind of entire scheme is that I personally believe that incentivizing employer is more important than incentivizing employee. See, people want to work. So you don't need additional incentive to uh, get people to work, but there is an incentive required for employer to hire more people. Okay, But over here, I can see what the government has done. As I have explained earlier that first, uh, there will be an additional to formal sector, which kind of is a positive. And some cash will also be there with the employee. Uh, and that will be you know, uh, spent by those new employees. And that will kind of create some kind of small uh, consumption spurts in the regional economies. So that will kind of help overall. It is good if it works properly, if it is work as desired. But what I fear is that the company will kind of restructure the salary structure such that the, it will account for oh, this is the kind of subsidy that the, the employees also get. So why not pay them that much amount less instead of paying full 1 lakh rupees? We can pay them uh, 95,000 rupees because 5,000 per month will in any case be given by the government. That can be one logic to it uh, and the employer can you know reduce the cost at least for the first few months that is also a good positive because if they are have if the company is large enough and saving 5000 behind one employee is also a good amount of saving i believe i get the logic of what they are doing here but i find it a bit difficult to digest like okay what sort of uh, impact will it have on aggregate let's see thirdly i believe that there are so many unnecessary compliance burden on employer. In scheme A, there is a need to take test. What happens of the test, who conducts it and all those things, that is a completely different ball game. That is one kind of complication. And then you have to refund if someone terminates the employment before 12 months. So basically that is going to create more pressure on payroll D. You know, you're, okay, this guy has left, so go the government apply for a refund and get the refund and track that if you know the government is paying the, re the refund or not so this is an additional compliance burden clear cut and of all the schemes i feel the scheme c is a bit more logical and i think that kind of scheme might you know work better i think that they have lost a big opportunity of addressing employment situation in india but if it works then then that's absolutely great i think that incentive to employer is one thing which is required obviously 
but at the same time why employer is not hiring understanding the situation and taking steps in that direction are more important that is what i feel that was lacking but that apart there was a very good section in the income tax act that could have been amended and that could have been used for improving employment situation in india i don't know if the government has missed this or not but there is a section called as atjjaa in income tax act what is it let us find out first it encourages employers to generate new employment opportunities in the formal sector and provide employment benefits to eligible employees second it is applicable to only salary of up to 25000 rupees per month and there are some other restrictions here things are pretty sorted here's the example let's say that the abc limited is a manufacturing business that started its operations in financial year 2022 23 in fy23 total employee cost of the business was 50 lakh rupees and the business employed 200 employees in fy24 he hired additional 100 employees and paid them 25 lakh rupees so additional employment cost is basically 25 lakh rupees and the abc limited will get deductions under atjjaa for the period fy24 and it will be 30% of additional employee cost which is 30% of 25 lakh rupees which comes to 7.5 lakh rupees so 7.5 lakh rupees can be claimed as deduction and that much amount will be reduced from the income this was a very good section this was a very good provision and i think there was some requirement to you know amend this kind of law and uh, generate more employment and kind of incentivize employers also according to government report only the companies have used it and there is a tax foregone or basically in benefit to the companies of around 2 to 3000 crore rupees so that much benefit was already given to employers you have to make it more simpler and better for all the employers so that could have been done what are your thoughts let me know the other thing which i feel uh, is that the government might have acted in a bit of haste it means that the government is not focused enough the government doesn't know what's the problem and therefore they are just testing waters to you know find out where exactly the problem is and you know gen if one scheme works then they will you know stick to that particular scheme such kind of is also an argument and one reason of why that can be the possibility is again because of the lack of proper data if the government does not have proper data then how can we expect that it will you know create better policies so that was one uh, point which i had raised in one of my previous uh, youtube short or instagram reel that the census is not done there are many other things that the government has not done so all similarly employment data is also not that credible and that robust so if we need to understand the problem we need to have data and for that you have to fix the statistical systems of the country so that is one thing that the government should really really do and that's why i have started with the government data compared to cmi data because i feel that there is a lot of gap and that gap needs to be addressed the employment scenario is pretty much in a bad shape right now in the country and if we are not able to solve the problem and for that we need to understand where the problem is and make policies based on such data right now that is somewhere is missing and therefore we need to have a more trustworthy data more credible data which everyone can rely upon and which kind of reflects the reality and lastly in on a very lighter note like many other bjp schemes uh, this scheme was has no acronym or something like that you know like uh, pm kisan or pm kusum or some kind of thing uh, they are, are so good at that and that is also lacking uh, so that's just one thing which i would like to end on so these are my thoughts on the employment scheme on from the budget in the next video we are going to deal with the much deeper and very serious problem of employment through the angle of demographic dividend so 
do tune in to the next episode also and if you have enjoyed this video if you have liked this video if you have liked my work then please do hit that like button and share this video with each and everyone you know the next episode is almost ready so we'll see you soon